Namaste. So as you know, we're in the middle of this long series on the Brahma Sutras. And, you know, we're just getting started. <laughs> there are hundreds of Adhikaranas, and there are, you know, 555 sutras. And so to explain them all and go through the commentaries, I mean, you know, it's probably five to ten years of work. But the recent videos, the recent ones on Adhikarana 4, are about the arguments of the Vritikas. Now, who are the Vritikas? Well, Vritti means a modification or a difference, or in other words, a new argument. Ka means to make. There's a mosquito in here. <laughs> so they're making new arguments. They're changing, they're trying to change the game. And Really, they're envious of the Vedic scriptures, and they're trying to dethrone them, prove them wrong, and start their own thing. In those days, thousands of years ago, in Vedic society, it was a form of entertainment for brahmanas to go around and pick fights with noted scholars and debate in public. And so, usually they'd have some bet that if whoever wins, the other one, the loser, would become their disciple. But the vritikas, you know, they, they never mean anything they say, really. It's just all fluff, mental speculation. They're just trying to find some angle of attack, you know, some hack that will uh, defeat the arguments of the scriptures. So what does that remind you of today? Well, there are so many scientists, logicians, polemicists, religionists, didacticians. <laughs> oh, and let's not forget the disinformation peddlers. Coming up with newer and newer, actually lies, but they think they're arguments but they're actually not at all true because their logic and reason does not come to the same conclusion as the Vedas. So this is true then of all contemporary thinkers, all contemporary logicians, and what to speak of politicians and so on. Their whole trip is a lie. The prescience of Shankaracharya is remarkable. Later on, we'll see in the second pada how he defeats the materialists, the atomists, and the, the sankhyas, and so on, who say that the cause of the universe is dull matter. That simply by the interactions of matter, life and consciousness arise. Well, this is nonsense, you know? Anyone who has half a brain cell can think their way out of that one, or should be able to. But because people are addicted to material sense gratification, they tend to believe the scientists and engineers and financiers and governments because they have an investment in the material world, in a material identity, in a material job or role as a family man, as a member of a corporation or a religion or a political party or whatever it is, they are fixed in their thinking and they have to support the ideology of whatever group they're a member of. So in other words, they're not free to speak. They're not free to say what they actually think. They're not free to inquire into the truth without any kind of qualification. No, they have to stay within the boundaries of what is acceptable speech in their particular little group. 
and all groups are little groups, even great nations. Although they may have, you know, millions and millions or even billions of citizens, it's all based on a lie, which is that you draw a line on a map and then this side is this country and the other side is another country and they're ready to go at it and fight to the death to defend their so-called claims to their boundaries and so on. Now, this is insanity. And now we see that the psychosis of war is spreading all over the planet and that it's becoming normalized to be in an armed conflict where, with the intention of killing the opposite fighters, whoever they are. So, of course, this is nuts. This is insane. This is stupid. Because they're all fighting for what? A flag? A country? Some kind of abstraction? Some kind of ideology? Or maybe just, just about money? Money and power. Money and power are like this, you know? And they are the reasons why most people do most of the things they do. And especially, you know, the really crazy people, like the leaders of the nations, who have gotten so unintelligent that they're ready to risk everything just for some imagined place in the history books or something. I'm not sure what it is. I don't understand it, quite frankly. It just seems like madness. So this is a time of madness. This is a time of confusion, insanity, psychosis. Mercury just went retrograde and it's speeding up, going backwards into Gandanta in Pisces, where at the same time there's going to be a really nasty solar eclipse which, by the way, happens to be very much in alignment with my Lagna, my rising sign. So something is going to happen. Over the next week or so, you'll see a rising tide of confusion. You'll feel it. You won't have to read it in the news or hear it from other people. You'll feel it directly yourself. And that is the result of the astrological configuration. So in times like this, the modern-day vritikaras come up with newer and newer and crazier and more and more illogical arguments. Propaganda, disinformation, lies upon lies upon lies. So the best thing you can do is go on retreat. Don't read the news, because it's not going to tell you anything that's true. Wait and see what happens. After the eclipse, it looks like two or three days of total confusion, total darkness. And then there is the uh, conjunction of Mars and Saturn in Aquarius, and something big is going to happen. We don't know what it is. Well, we can make an educated guess. It's got something to do with war. But to try to make a more specific prediction is not possible. Although some people try it, but we'll see how accurate they are. <laughs> I prefer to stay on the side of caution and stick with what I'm certain is going to happen. Because, you see, the universe is one big mind, the mind of God, actually the mind of Virat, Hiranyagarbha, Brahma. Lord Brahma is the forefather. He's the progenitor. He's the antecedent, the uh, relative of all beings, of all species, on all planets in the universe. According to his state of consciousness, the universal mind can be quiet, calm, peaceful, 
or it can be agitated, or it can be biased, tilted in a certain direction. And this can go on actually for some time, years of our time. And then suddenly things will change. And usually nobody is prepared for it except for the really good astrologers. People put down astrology, but that's probably because their only experience is with bad astrology, Western astrology, or commercial astrologers, who, like everybody else in this game, has an axe to grind, has a bias, has some ideology that they're pushing subtly through their so-called predictions. And so we see this everywhere now. And in the next week, it's going to come to a head. It's going to get to the point where it's absolutely over the top. So the best strategy is simply disconnect. I may be making more videos this week, or I may not. I may just stick with my practice, because that's where I find peace. Making these videos, I mean, sometimes it's very difficult when the universal mind is in a state of agitation due to astrological forces. Well, actually, you know, there are different theories about astrology. Some say that the planets cause things to happen or cause a certain energy or certain movement or certain bias or alignment in society. I don't think that's true. I think that the planets are a map or even maybe a clock to the universal mind. And they simply indicate what is going on on a big, big scale. That's why trying to narrow down these predictions to local topics is so risky. It's hard to tell how the macrocosmos gets funneled into the microcosmos, the world of human experience, and so on. But we can see that the universal mind as a whole, at least in the area of this planetary system, is going through some really difficult times right now. So don't listen to the vritikaras, huh? Like the sutra, it says, tu, but that's not true, because the Upanishads reveal Brahman. And we know that because we've realized it through the Upanishads. We can see it directly. And so we have full confidence that these specious arguments are just so much hogwash, <laughs> to use the polite term. <laughs> so... With that, I leave you, and I'm not sure when I'm going to be making the next video. I just have to see what happens. Om Tat Sat. Om Shakti Om. Om Namah Shivaya.